I'm Kat and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about five common mistakes beginner houseplant owners make when they start their collection. These are mistakes that I have made myself, my plant friends have made, and are pretty common across the board. So don't feel bad that you're making them, but just identify it and fix it before you kill your entire collection. If you don't make these mistakes, then you can just click off because apparently you're perfect. I'm gonna be showing you that I've made these mistakes myself. Mm -hmm. I have five common mistakes and I have five plants. These are plants that have begged me to learn from my mistakes and finally I have. Finally, I know the way and I am here to share that with you so that you can just get a jump start on your beautiful collection without losing anything or having a couple ugly ones in the bunch like I now do. So the number one mistake that beginner houseplant owners make when they start their collection is potting their plant in way too big of a pot size. For example, you buy a four inch pot plant, you know, one of those little smaller guys, and you bring it home and you're so excited and you wanna give it the most room to grow, you want it to flourish, and you go and you immediately pot it up into a six inch pot and you think, hey, well, the roots are gonna make its way out into the soil, I'm giving it room to grow, and this is gonna be really good for my plant. But the truth is that it's more likely that the roots are not gonna soak up all of the water and the nutrients in all of that soil mix, and instead, you might be promoting root rot. So I'm gonna show you a plant that I've done that with. As you can see, this plant is sad and it is in every single video that I have posted so far because I just cannot bring him back from the damage I did when I first got him. And what did I do? I got him from Trader Joe's. This was my first foliage plant. I brought him home. He was in probably a four inch pot and I potted him up in an eight inch plastic container with no drainage. And what did that do? It kept the soil moist, it kept the roots really moist, and now this plant has a very, very small root system. And I've had to pot them down back into a six inch pot because at this point, the plant itself is a little bit too big to go into a four inch pot, but the root system, um, which you can see in a previous video, is way too small to go into anything larger. As you can see, if you pot your plant in too big of a pot, it will have lasting impact on your plant. I've had this plant for probably two years now and it's, yeah, you get the idea. Don't pot your plant in too big of a pot. Houseplant mistake number two that plant owners tend to make is potting a plant in the wrong container. And what do I mean by that? Maybe you have a four inch plant and it's not ready to be bumped up to a six inch pot and you identify that, but you still wanna pot it into something nice after acclimating it to your home. There are a couple ways that you can go wrong here. Number one is that your pot should absolutely have a drainage hole, especially if you are a beginner houseplant owner. You'll get there, but it's not time to get that crazy yet. Make sure that your pot has a drainage hole, number one. Number two, I would have to recommend using a porous kind of pot. Uh, most common is a good old terracotta here. Or a basalt pot, which I can show you. Um, basalt. Also, a little bit of a spoiler. So, stay away from things kind of like plastic, ceramic, things that really aren't porous and allowing moisture to escape from the pot because that's gonna trap more moisture in the pot and again, 
promote root rot, promote bacteria. You're probably gonna increase your chances of having fungus gnats in the house because they are really attracted to very soggy soil. You can see that I potted a pothos in a, uh, I don't know what this is, ceramic pot from Amazon. Um, does it have a drainage hole? Yes, but it is so small and this is so not porous. And guess what? A pothos hates moisture more than anything. I've had to get a moisture meter just to make sure I'm not overwatering him because I don't even want to use my finger for this. I really want to be able to tell that the soil is dry from the top all the way to the bottom and I see the leaves getting soft and drooping a little bit before I put any more moisture in this pot. Uh, pothos do not like moisture. It is manageable if you do pot it into something that isn't porous or doesn't have a drainage hole, but it's gonna make your life a lot easier, especially as a beginner houseplant owner, to just go ahead and go with the terracotta, go with the drainage hole. Um, yeah, so this plant is actually doing very well, if I can uh, compliment myself, but it would be a lot easier if I just kept it in the nursery pot, which usually has a lot of holes and the plant is used to. So even though it's not porous, it's okay to keep it in the nursery pot. Um, I would have been better off doing that and just placing it in this cover pot or just going with terracotta and putting it in a macrame hanger. Common beginner houseplant owning mistake number three is not adding soil amendments. And what does that mean? That means things like perlite, orchid bark, uh, mosquito bits, all of that good stuff that adds to the potting mix that you are using. Why is this important? Again, moisture in the soil. You are really wanting to control that moisture that is staying in the soil. So depending on your watering habits, which you'll learn over time, whether you're an overwaterer or an underwaterer, will kind of depend on the amendments that you're using. My example here is this little snake plant. Um, this is a Sansevieria robusta. And Sansevieria uh, snake plants, they hate moisture in their soil for too long. So you really want to make sure that they are drying out between waterings. And me, I tend to be an overwaterer, so I want to be double careful with this plant. So what do I do? I add tons of perlite to my regular potting mix. Um, it kind of, this one will vary a little bit depending on your watering schedule, watering habits, what plant it is. So this one I know I want to keep dry, so I'm going to add quite a bit of amendments to specifically to keep the moisture uh, under control. However, you can also add things, like I said, like mosquito bits, which are going to be keeping fungus gnats at bay. Or you can add a slow-release fertilizer. It's really up to you to do your research on what's going to work for your plants and your habits and your environment. But it is important to consider soil amendments in general. Common houseplant mistake number four is going to be creating a watering schedule for yourself. Don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong, having a schedule of checking in on your plants is so important so that you don't forget about them. What that looks like for me is doing intense houseplant care, usually on the weekends and having a check-in on Wednesday. However, I am always keeping an eye on my houseplants. I'm probably checking on all of my houseplants at least once a day to make sure that they have what they need. Usually I do a lot of watering on Wednesdays, but if on Wednesday I come around and a plant looks super soaked, I'm not gonna give it water. If I come around on a Thursday and the plant is super dry, I will go ahead and water it. It's gonna fluctuate based on the weather outside, uh, the conditions of your house. If you put in AC, if you take out an AC, all of this is gonna change and it's gonna vary week to week. So I really recommend just checking in on your plants frequently and not being like, it's Wednesday, I'm gonna water this plant because it's Wednesday. An example for this that I've had to learn with is this bird's nest fern, which, you know, ferns like moisture, they like humidity. I really had to start paying attention to its the soil moisture and everything, oh my God, everything is coming back to soil moisture. I used to do a watering schedule of once a week and it was not enough for this guy. 
and now I do kind of like a twice a week thorough check-in but sometimes this guy needs a little bit less water so it's not soggy or a little bit more water because the humidity in the air was really high that week and it's become really important to me to not rely so much on a schedule as much as use it just kind of as a template for me checking in on my plants. The last common houseplant mistake that I'm gonna talk about is not doing your research. That sounds super boring, but it's really, really important to know what you are buying. Do not get me wrong. If I see a cute plant, no matter what it is, odds are I'm gonna buy it. But even just buying that plant on impulse and bringing it home and doing intense research on it, especially if it has a high price tag, is really important. An example that I have is this, Alocasia poly. And I'm going to talk about this plant specifically for multiple reasons, but here's a little close up on this guy. So why Alocasia poly? Well, first of all, I did my research before getting this plant. I knew I was interested in getting an alocasia poly before I got it, and I knew that I would need humidity. I needed a humidifier before I got this plant. I knew I would need orchid bark for the soil. I kind of had a general idea of what this plant likes before I brought it into my home because I wanted it to do well from the jump. I have killed plants by bringing them home because I thought they were cute and couldn't provide the necessary conditions for them. Another reason I'm talking specifically about this plant is because it is a fairly common alocasia and I want to buy more expensive alocasia. If anyone wants to give me an alocasia Sabrina reticulata, please hit me up. So before I get into the more expensive kinds, I want to give a try to the basic that is easily replaceable, it's not going to be a hit to my wallet, um, and I can kind of figure out the best placement in my home for alocasia, what kind of humidity levels they like, and that's not to say that all alocasia are going to act exactly the same, but it gives me a good idea if me and alocasia are a good match, and so far I would say yes! Aww. So. Those are my five houseplant care tips for beginners. The five mistakes that I have made. Maybe you made a couple of them. Uh, I definitely know a lot of people have made them. And if you don't make any of those mistakes, go away. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little something new about your houseplants, especially if you are expanding your collection right now while you're social distancing at home. I think it's a great time to learn about plants, to expand your collection, to make your home a little bit more comfortable, and plants are a great way to do that. So, subscribe if you like like this video, comment down below what houseplant tips you have for beginners, what plants you're struggling with, um, 